conclude our first round action here on streaming board one. We've got one of the stars of the World Championship in Alan Souter. Had that brilliant run to the last 16. The Scotsman taking on Robbie Knops, new player to the tour from Belgium, who appears to have gone pretty hard with the dark shirt with what I think may be some sort of 60. manga styling. I'm not an expert, but thankfully, three-time world champion Glenn Durrant is an expert on all things Japanese cartoons. 60. Tell me more about the shirt, Glenn. Al Alan Souter is a very good player. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that did throw me under the bus there, that one, didn't it? But Alan Souter, I've just got to tell you a little story. About, I, mean, I mean, there's an awful lot sort of said about him, but the way he's come across to the PDC, but everybody nice, knew, Dan, how good this guy was. He just would rock up to a couple of BDO tournaments. He'd go to the Lakeside qualifiers and win it. He did, was doing so much for youth darts, and we all know what he does, you know, is a 60. professional job. And just to watch him last year and, you know, the year before, he's, he's just doing absolutely fantastic. And I'm very, very proud of Alan Souter. 136. Well, he did burst into life at the back end of last year the grand slam the, the pro toy events just before that the grand slam and then to the world championship he was playing 100. by far the best darts of his pdc career he was very good when he first showed up in the first few weeks but even with that debut run at ali pali to the last 16 81. he said I, I didn't play anywhere near my best but no he didn't i think that there's there's more to come potentially from suits And he did have a little laugh at my attire as I walked through today. It was like the wall of shame walking through the place this morning. And Robin up, so I don't know a great deal about, apart from... And that 25 again is right in that magnet, but this Belgian who got through to UK. As we look at Souter on 100. All he can do is set it up, and as I've said many times today, 40. Here comes that 25 finish this time with the Belgian. Turns out Suits couldn't set it up as he wanted. Double eight for Robbie. Game and Knops does get it. It's a break of throw for a 1 0 lead. Now, having furiously Googled Robbie Knops, I understand that his nickname is the Cyan, which is a reference to the anime Game show three. Dragon Ball Z. Yeah? You're not Glenn, you're looking, you're looking yeah, you're blank gonna, at me, mate. You're not going to bring me into this, are you? Yeah. You're not trying, well, but look, I don't know a great deal about Dragon Ball Z, but three-time world champion Glenn Durrant is an expert on it, so Glenn can fill us in on all of that. What's happened to the mic? It uh, <laughs> seems to, to be going down, but uh, I, I, I always thought I'd felt that like most players who were making a debut, I'd come across them sort of in the BDO WDF system, but he's a brand new player. I did send a message to Dimitri to ask a little bit about him and uh you know, i've got some information there but you know so far so good it's very very tough coming into the pro tour as a debutant but also you're feeling full of confidence you've gone through q school you know he actually beat richard veenster in the to, you know in the final to qualify for that outright you know and he's saying he's probably loving absolutely every moment of this he had a decent weekend last nice weekend set. he scored quite well he got a win under his belt um you know, then you look at the draws and it's you know, the kind of players you get and then you see Alan Souter today 95. and you're on the stream board as well. Just enjoy it, fella. That's what I would say to you, Robbie. Yeah, he's very first game on the tour, lost to Gary Anderson, but we know Gary's playing some good stuff. He was beaten by Dirk Van Dijvenboda on the Sunday, but did pick up that victory over Adam Warner, another <laughs> new tour card holder. He's got a very interesting style about him, Robbie Knops, hasn't he? Looks like he's got a real he's lean, up. he's very side on, and then that throwing action is very much, it, it, it's almost like he's got different little checkpoints before he gets to the throwing part of the action, but it's not all in a straight line, oh, is it? It's, he prods and prods somewhere else and prods again. It's all about replication, as long as you're doing it the same every single time, but you're absolutely right, there's a couple of nooks and like crannies it. as he brings that dart back whereas Alan Souter it's all about this pullback it's an incredibly long pullback actually bringing it back to his ears and that's not nice hence the reason he growls at it but he can just see the top of that double eight and that's all these players need right now we're talking about the elite the best 128 players in the world he had a minute target to hit but he absolutely pinged it 
With a plum. Yeah, that is a beauty of a dart from Alan Souter. One of the big things that made a difference for Suits at the back end of last year was he suddenly became a very, very big 180 hitter. Now, I don't know if that's tied up with a slight change in equipment. I believe he changed his flights. He's working on these sort of slightly more rigid, thicker flights now. He was, I think it was the pair ones he used to use. Yeah, absolutely spot on, yeah. It's, uh, he was one of the few players alongside me and Steve Beaton as a pair and, and Alan. And I, could, I knew he'd been working an awful lot with Mission Dart in, in getting what was required for him 140. and it's really important because a big strength of Alan Souter's games is his you know his finishing he's absolutely deadly if you give him a double you always feel confident he's going to hit that so the only thing you do want to take away from working on the trajectory of the dart of big scoring is that you're not taking away your strength of your doubles but it seems to complement both I have a I think it's going to be a great season for Alan Souter and 43. you know sometimes that second year syndrome he came through that you know, and now he's just part and parcel of the PDC and looking very, very much at home. And his work-life balance is fantastic. You know, he's a, he's a fireman. He's, you know, he's got a wonderful family back home, and it just seems to be working really, really well for him. Well, I think he had a bit of a nightmare journey down from our broth yesterday. Something like, I think about ten hours it took him. I saw him get off the same train as me at Barnsley, but he's made a mess of that. He's got a little bit of time with which to play here, though. 46. So if he can hold his throw, he'll go into the lead for the first time. Well, I'll give him some hope in the sense that uh, our world seniors champion took 12 hours to get to the venue last week, the Robbie Thornton. So maybe it's just in the water for these Scots. Double nine, big dart. Damn big shot. finish. And like I said, if you give Alan Souter any sniff of a double. And just look at his eyes there. Look at that. Look at the grimace. It just what means so need? much for him. And these players, if you can get through the first round, the relaxation then kicks in. Because right now they're playing on adrenaline, the pain, and I just want to get through the first round. I want to earn a wage for the day. And then all of a sudden what you'll see the most see? fantastic darts. And as Dan alluded to, there's the 180s that are beginning to become part and parcel of his game right now. Yeah, it was an astonishing game of darts that he played the back end last year when he really was hitting form. Had an 11 leg game, hit 11 maximums. He actually missed the double for a nine darter in the very first leg of that game. But that's the sort of thing that we d we just hadn't seen him 42. do that sort of stuff before. But he was hitting 180s regularly and it was a big part of his performances at the Grand Slam. And that's what tells me that he's maybe looked at his he game. You know, what do I need to do? I had a wonderful first year when I come over, capitalised you know, on the second year, and what can I do to get to the upper echelon of the game? He's in the top 32 now, he was absolutely over the moon with that, but how do you get to the top 16? Because Me life too. of a dar player in the top 16 is magnificent. And it's only when you realize that you're no longer there that you realize, you know, to get invited to the Euro tours, to get invited to the TV tournaments, and he has aspirations to do that. Yeah, it would be interesting for Suits if he did force his way continue to move up the rankings that might mean he has some decisions to make about work and everything else but that's a discussion for another day because he's got some way to go yet and that is a really frustrating one for Robbie Knopps if you're going to miss that one you can't miss inside it doesn't give you another chance to win the leg and boring, boring does. I will enjoy the 180s, but it's about these two dark Being combos shot. for me. They're the kind of things that take you from good to great. You know, when you're hearing the commentator in your brain saying, this is where Alan Suit is at his strength, you know, this is where Alan Suit is at his best. And two dark combinations, which he's been so effective over the years. And if he complements that with a high score, and you're looking at one dangerous individual right there. 100. Certainly are. We are seeing some second round games getting underway around the boards. A top seed Luke Humphreys up against another Anyone? Belgian player. They're everywhere you look in PDC darts nowadays. Brian Roman and Connor Scott and Jeffrey Sparadans, two unseeded players over on board 15. Connor Scott was the man to come through in the first round, take out one of the top seeds in Dirk van Dijvenbode. So that little section of the draw has potentially opened up. It could be a big opportunity for Sparadans or Connor Scott to go on a run. Connor Scott, of course, a man we saw go on a deep run in the very early stages of him 
getting his PDC card last year. 180. Yeah, and a couple of players who lost their two games last week and now getting underway. So that's really good. I was surprised to see Stephen Bunton lose, but then I realised he was up against Ryan Joyce. That's a, another unbelievable first game. And when you sat at home looking at Darts Connect, and I was looking at the types of first round games last week, and you're just thinking, wow. Yeah, well, Gary Anderson looks like he's got the bit between his teeth in terms of he wants to play. He's doing Euro Tour qualifiers. And he's also playing well, 79. but that's a worry for everyone because he's floating around as an unseeded player. So he could easily take some scalps. Unable to do it against Josh Rock on this board earlier, of course. 60. That was a phenomenal game. I'm, I'm sure you've seen thousands sat in this seat here, but that game will live in the memory for me. Just two players enjoying just as Alan Sue was enjoying this 82 finish, he'll move across the hockey, he'll widen that angle. Aim shot. And he'll smack that double in like he does with last dart. And it just doubly hurts when you're the opponent behind you when them darts are going in with the last dart. Well, For suits, no reaction, just gets on with his job. Very professional. Yeah, it is professional. He's four legs on the spin. Suits has taken out 32 where he had that awful blocker dart and found a way through. 47, 58, and 82. 104. The checkouts are getting bigger. That none of them are spectacular, but they've all gone, and that is soul destroying as an opponent. 35. Because Nops has been on finishes in every single one of those legs, and Alan Sue has just been shutting the door repeatedly. Nops has battled and battled and battled at the end of every leg. He thinks he's got a chance. No, no, you don't. 60. It's just a very professional job and killing them off at the end. Like I said, you don't win the tournament in the first round and it's a very professional 90 average. You, you know, if you're going to win it, it'll have to be a lot better than that. But right at this stage, you'd be absolutely delighted the way it's going right now. I can assure you that when you get through that first round game, the relaxation that comes into your body is absolutely night and day. And that's why you see the last 64s, well, the last 32s, where the, uh, the performance is just so high. Yeah, I can tell you, we know what the second round games on this board are going to be at the culmination of this one. Dave Chisnell versus Steve Lennon. And then Daryl Gurney's game will be taken on either, oh, it says Adam Warner or Danny Jansen. I'm not sure that's correct. We'll let you know for sure. 140. Joe Cullen's game will feature on the other streaming board against Scott Waits as Knops looks at tops. 54. Can't get it. And Suits, it's another one of those mid-range finishes. Doesn't look spectacular, but it's vital. That's gone into the one. So 61 minus one, Allen is 60. So you're looking at just the fattest 20, but also you're thinking the way it's lying. Does he have to move? Just has to move just a touch. And the way these last darts are going, you fancied that. But it was a missed tops for knobs, and it wasn't a buttes for suits. Game shot. Well, double five does the job, and he just stops the rot. That's his first leg in five, Robbie Knops. Like I said, it's the first time I've sort of seen him. I'm quite impressed with Knops. Probably what I expected with him. I can assure him it's going to be a very tough couple of years on the circuit. So you've got to enjoy it, Robbie. That's what I would say. You know, you've came through Q school. That's very, very tough to do, especially in them European events right now. Just enjoy, 54. knuckle down practice hard get yourself here in the best shape because you're up there now with the best players in the world and you're not going to get any freebies 59 it was a different drive to Barnsley for me today Dan that's for sure I can't tell you how difficult it was driving knowing and I highlight the word knowing you're going to get pummel 6 nil 6 one as it's sort of been the sort of past 18 months sort of just to come up here with it in a different capacity Really excited about 60. seeing the players up close and personal. You, know, you get the best seat in the house right here, and you're just seeing the quality of darts right now. Look, they, they are fascinating weekends. You are going to see stories develop over the course of this 12 months. Last year, there were a few of them. Josh Rock was obviously one of them. Luke Humphreys winning the first one of the year, setting himself up to be Pro Tour Player of the Year, and do all sorts of things. Bloke nearly got in the Premier League. And it was all crafted here in Barnsley, where Knops eyes up the bullseye, cannot find it. Didn't need to go for that. It's going to cost him a dart when he returns. He could have just set that up. I know you're just trying to get into the mind of these players, and maybe the one centre would be the catalyst for him for where he's wanting to be. 
It's double 16 is where he wants to be right now. He doesn't move across yeah, the hockey and he doesn't need to. He just uses that first dart as a guide and beautifully just caresses that dart into the double 16. And there's his reaction there. It's game on. He's back in this. And more importantly, that was a break of throw. He needed that to get back into this game. And it's back on throw. One hundred. Now, Luke Humphreys. Last weekend, Luke Humphreys won a game with a hundred and nineteen average. At the minute, he is four 0 up on Brian Ramon, and he is set to better it. He is averaging a hundred and twenty. Am I allowed to say disgusting? I yes, mean, you just, are. It's just. One hundred and forty. I'm sure Brian Ramon is saying something very similar right now. Ryan Searles in a spot of bother against Jermaine Watamina, who's a player who has been steadily improving over the last few months. Admittedly, only improving to try and get back to where he was, because he was very, very good and very, very consistent, Please Jermaine Watamina. But a real crisis of form and confidence has hit him very hard. And he's trying to get over that now. But he, he seems to be improving at a, a pretty what steady, if unspectacular rate, although it's pretty spectacular 112 average that he's thrown at the minute to be 3-1 up on heavy metal Ryan so 140. I began to see the improvement at the back end of last year uh, with Jermaine. I know he's extremely disappointed not to get a couple of wins last week in place championship one and two but he was delighted with his Euro 2 results so he came here still still quite happy um, but yeah definite improvement there it could be a, again another big year. So Nops looks at double 18 and pings it very comfortably and all of a sudden from sort of nowhere it's now 4-4 and there's the side of him that I hadn't seen a little wry smile there from Suits 104 well, it was four legs on the bounce from Suits to go 4-1 up Robbie Nops has won three on the spin and Suits has only had one dart at double in that spell if he'd taken that one at tops for 5-1 this could be game over already it is very much game on didn't know if it was a sort of one-day wonder, but you don't come through these Q schools. You can win the odd game here and there and just have a great day. So he's got real class and quality about him. And the last three legs, he's really demonstrating that. And uh, this is quite impressive right now. Oh, great leg of darts. Alan so just lost the last three on the spin. He knows this is enormous leg on throw. And he's hit two big trebles in his first three visits. 40. Each of his thir first three visits, I should say. And it leaves another one of those mid-range finishes that he's been pretty good on in this game. Doesn't need to stay on the 18s. Just doing the numbers. We've already mentioned he's great at the checkouts. And he's sort of added 180s to his game in recent months. He still hasn't... 50. quite got his head around the counting suits and never has and I'm not sure he ever will yeah there's some players where yeah they just never will that's a lovely 100. last dart there from Robin off just makes Alan suit to think on this double 18 but after 12 darts to leave a one dart finish that's a great marker that will no hurt score. that will hurt because what Robbie's done is leave a two dart combination it's all about the first dart now he's got options there's one. Game what a finish that is from Robin Ops. And there is the reaction from him because he knows that is a decisive moment as Alan Souter nods his head. He knew exactly what was going on. What a wonderful finish that was. Two darts of double tops. Look at the eyes now. The focus is there. Now you're thinking, I've got the darts. 15 darts, please. Just make him hit 12. What a start, young man. Well, what a time for Robbie Knopps to go into overdrive. 100 checkout with two double tops. Kicks off 180 with the darts. And Alan Souter, who looked like he was just reasserting himself in this game, getting control of it again. He has lost four legs on the spin. And he's already trailing by quite some distance. This has got to be... Well, he needs to pick up a treble. Two, ideally. I think that's just about enough to keep him in touch. Yeah, that's two massive darts because Robbie would be thinking I'm taking control, but 
140. What a response. 140 after nine darts, 140. You'll see Alan probably look at the 18s. He hasn't, which goes back to the fact that his finishing maybe is an area. But it's Robin Ops is now to lose. Well, just set it up. Grab the ton. 60. Doesn't quite manage it. Leaves himself 80. He's just taken out a tops, tops finish. He's no need to go tops, tops. You're never quite sure with players what routes they're going to go with 94. this. But he should get at least one match dart. Yeah, the first dart. The 20 is essential. The treble is the bonus. That's not the end of the world. He's going to get a dart at tops. Does he move? He moves far right. And what an absolute outstanding finish. It was 4-1 to Alan Souter at one point. It was looking like a rout. But Robin Ops, did we know an awful lot about him? No, we certainly do now because he complimented some very high scores. And look at that reaction. That's what it means to these players. A wonderful 6-4 victory there from Robin Ops against the very, very talented Alan Souter who looks pretty disappointed because he had that game. He's looking at the averages right now. And what he's looking at there, there wasn't an awful lot to split between them. It was a fantastic ex exploit of match play darts. At one point, it was Alan Sewers, then it was Robbie Knox. But it's Robbie Knox with a 91.74, with a highlight being that 100 finish, them two darts at the tops. That was the decisive moment in that game.